Hey guys, Mike here at Amish Tutorials and welcome back to a new modeling video. Alright, as I typically do, we're going to do a subscriber request today and the topic of today is how to model a, a brick wall with busted up stucco on it. Okay, so that said, let's get started with our wall. I'm going to go up and create a polygon cube and then I'm going to hit R to scale it up and push it in until we have something similar to a wall. All right. Now, I want to define an area where I want stucco on my wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch views until I'm uh, you know, facing the wall in full. And I'm going to hit Control A to get into my attribute editor. I'm going to select my modeling toolkit. I'm going to go down to multi-cut, click on that. And I'm just going to start to kind of hit Enter there. Hang on. There we go. So I'm going to just create an area, something like that, right? Just a random cut, if you will. Okay. Then I'm going to go back to my perspective view. I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard. And I'm going to right click at a face and take the area that I want to use as stucco and go to Edit Mesh and Extrude. Hit W and pull that out. Now, don't go nuts on that. You don't want it to be too wide or too thick. So let's do something like so. And now that we have that area defined, we don't want that to be a clean cut like it is right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop Tool, Option Box, Multiple, and we'll do one, which will allow us to create that one, uh, one edge in the middle. So we're going to zoom in. And there you go. We're going to hit Q on our keyboard. And we're going to have a look. Okay, looks all right. Actually, let's go back into Insert Edge Loop. Option box. Multiple. And let's do three. And what we're going to do next is we're going to zoom in. And we're just going to add some edges in these areas that will allow us to manipulate the shape a little bit. Okay. Now, how good this will look in the end result all depends on how much time you spend on it and how much detail you add. Okay. So hit Q on your keyboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in, right click at a face, take these two faces, hit W, and kind of pull that up just to create a surface that is a little bit less regular. Okay, so we'll take this. And that way you kind of create a layered surface. Okay. Now again, you can go nuts and spend a lot of time on that. I'm just going to do that as an example. All right. So let's take these two, pull that up and maybe take that one and push that down. All right. You get the idea. Okay, so now that we have that, let's do some texturing. So I'm going to make this piece my brick wall. So I'm going to select it, right click, assign new material. Let's do a Lambert. And then I'm going to go into my Lambert. Uh, I'm going to click on this checkered box here next to the color tab. We're going to select File, Folder. And I created a couple of texture files. I got a brick wall texture here that I want to use. So we're going to open that up. And I'm going to hit my checkered sphere here so we can see what's going on. Okay. Now you can see it's way too big because it's not UV'd. So we're going to select it. And I'm going to go up to UV and automatic projection. Which is a little bit better. But it still needs to be rotated. So we're going to go to UV and UV editor. We're going to right click and go to shell. And this is the area that we want. Okay. And we're going to go up to rotate, hit rotate and rotate until in our model, you can see that's facing correctly. So that's all good. Then we're going to minimize that out. And then on that section here, we want to have our stucco. Okay. So we're going to right click and go to face. Now, in this case, it's a bit more difficult because we've got all these faces down here. 
So we got that face. We're going to hit shift and period or dot or point, whatever you want to call it, to increase our selected area until we have the bricks included. And then we're going to shift select the bricks to go back one step. So now we have all our stucco. Okay. I'm going to right click, assign new material, Lambert. Once again, check it box, file folder and we're going to go with the stucco right there and as you can see way too big again because it's not UV'd so we're going to select that face again shift period to increase that selection shift left click to unselect that and go to UV and automatic projection and then we're going to go to UV and UV editor and have a look okay so we're going to right click and go to shell and let's see what part is our, that seems to be our brick. And that's our stucco, okay? So we're gonna hit R to scale that up a little bit, which kind of makes our stucco smaller right there. And then we're gonna do to make it more realistic is we're gonna add some bump maps to it, okay? Now what I did to create the bump maps is I took these identical images that we use here, opened them in Photoshop, made them black and white and increased the contrast. That's all. Okay. So we're going to start with our brick wall. And let's see, that would be this guy. We're going to go down to bump mapping, hit that checkered box. We're going to do file. Let's decrease the bump depth to let's say 0.25. We're going to go up to the file here, hit the folder, and I'm going to use the brick wall black white and open that up. Okay, very nice. Now I'm going to do the same here with my uh, stucco. So let's select that. That would be my, let's see, Lambert 3. I'm going to go into the bump map section, select file, folder. Stucco black white, there we go. I need to adjust the depth of the bump, so I'm going to go up to bump right there. Let's do 0 0.25 on that, there we go. Maybe even a bit less 0 0.15, yeah, it's a bit better. Okay, and now let's set up some light for our scene. So I'm going to go up to create lights and let's do point light. Hit W to pull that out and hit 7 on my keyboard to activate the light, like so. Let's do a little bit more intensity. Let's do 3. That's a little bit too much. 2. Pull that away just a little. I think I kind of liked it better when it was 1. Yeah, that's probably better. Okay. And let's do something like this. All right. Let's find a nice shot for our render. Something like this. Maybe even something like that so we can see it a bit better. Just see what works best. Yeah, that's all right. We're going to go up to render settings. I'm going to use mental ray. In my common tab, I'm going to go all the way down to render options and turn off enable default light. Then in the quality tab, let's increase the overall quality to about 1.5. Lighting quality is okay. Uh, let's see what else we've got going on there. Let's go to legacy options. Let's check that. I'm going to set up global illuminations. Uh, rebuild photo maps on. Okay, I'm gonna. Un, I'm not gonna use final gathering in this scene here. Let's see. We're not gonna use image based lighting either. That looks pretty much all good. I just have to go to my common tab and set up that I want HD 1080 as an image size. And then we're ready to render. So I'm gonna pause the video and see you guys when it's done. See you in a bit. Right guys, well there you have it. There's our end result. Uh, I think it turned out okay, considering the amount of time spent on it. 
And uh, keep in mind that you can use this technique for a lot of things. If you want to, for example, create a damaged wood, like a, you know, a disaster scene, whatever, or chip paint or something like that, you could do that. And uh, this is uh, pretty much uh, an extreme close-up. Uh, you could go for a texture of this effect as well. I think this looks uh, just nicer and uh, it's fairly low poly, so it should work okay. Not gonna put up the reference images because you can pretty much use any reference you want on this. And uh, if you got any questions as usual, just let me know. If I can help you, I will. Thanks.